three-dimensional truss is called a space truss. And in content, it's not really very much different than a planar truss, except it's three-dimensional. The basic element of a space truss is a tetrahedron. And this is triangles all the way around. So no matter what, you, what side you're looking at, it's a triangle. It's different than a pyramid. Pyramids often have four-sided bases. These are actual tetrahedrons, so that every single face is a triangle. That means if you take it apart and you look at any individual joint, you will have a three-dimensional particle. So that means you have the sum of the forces in X, the sum of the forces in Y, and the sum of the forces in Z to be able to solve for the internal member forces. Now, note, it is possible in a three-dimensional truss to have one place where, in fact, you only have a one all of your members in a plane. If you're looking at a joint like that where all of your members are flat, you only get two equations from that joint. Keep that in mind later on when you're, when you're looking at what makes a statically indeterminate truss. If they're all flat, then the sum of the forces is zero in the, in the third dimension, but that doesn't tell you anything about what your members are. How do you make a zero force member? So if you take a flat plane where all of the members are in a plane except one, this one, if everything else is in a plane except this one, then this one has to be zero for the same reason. If you sum the forces in that perpendicular to the plane where all of the other members are, then you get this one equals zero. So that's what makes up a three-dimensional a three zero force member. Statically indeterminate truss is the same as it was before. If it's not solvable by the methods of statics, then it's statically indeterminate. Now, a simple truss, either in 2D or 3D, says start with the basic element and add chunks of basic elements until you have a bigger truss. That's called a simple truss. So if I take these three that I had a minute ago, just these three elements, these three members with one extra joint, and I put them on top of my tetrahedron that I had a minute ago, now I have a bigger truss. That's called a simple three-dimensional space truss. These are always going to be statically determinant because no matter what you do, this extra joint gives you enough equations to be able to solve for the extra members, as long as you don't have way too many external loads. But th this kind of structure will be a statically determinant structure. If you have a situation where three times your number of joints is less than, this is how many equations you get that are linearly independent, is less than the number of members plus the number of external reactions, then all bets are off. You know it's not statically determinant. Beyond that, there isn't anything different from a 2D structure to a 3D structure. And when it comes to building three-dimensional space trusses, I recommend tetrahedrons and continuing to build out from your basic element. One other thing I can sort of show you here, if you have a lot of these lying around the house somewhere, the four-sided dice, put your four-sided dice together. That's how you know you're building a truss. So one goes next to the other, where the edges of the die are your members. The eight-sided die has a square in the middle of it, and that's not a part of our truss structure. So bear those in mind as you go on to build your own trusses.